Today we're back reading some more true off my chest and I'm actually kind of nervous about this. This subreddit can be bloody horrifying and I know I say that about everything that we read but this one genuinely is. And yeah, I'm excited but also nervous for this. So yeah, we're doing a brand new episode today but I'm also going to have a compilation at the end of this. The time on the screen right now is when the compilation's going to start. Oh yeah, and also guys, I started a new Instagram. I've wanted to make an actual Vinci Instagram for a while. So yeah, I started one and if you want to follow me, feel free. But for now, onto some true off my chest. Enjoy guys. My husband loses all of his pens and then borrows all of mine and loses those too. So I found a solution. I started holding onto my pens while giving him eye-catching alternatives. Pens with pom-poms at the end, glittery pink pens, rainbow pens, lavender pens with little unicorns printed all over. Pens that had large plastic diamonds at the end. Pens with fabric sunflowers sticking at the ends, etc. At first I did it because I thought it'd be funny to hand him increasingly ridiculous pens every time he asked me for one. But then the usefulness of my plan became obvious. He's very pleased with these pens since it's so hard to lose them And even if he does misplace one, there are dozens more scattered around And they're easy to find since they're so fabulous Yeah, when I first started handing them to him, he was amused and puzzled But then he saw the utility behind their snazzy designs I'm now free to keep all of my boring black pens to myself Problem solved Wait a second though, you described so many different fabulous pens So even though you gave them a whole bunch of pens that should be pretty hard to lose They still must have lost a few And also, can I just say how beautiful it is to read a story on here that isn't scary or downright heartbreaking. So many posts on here are like, oh, my husband cheated on me, my wife cheated on me, I'm getting divorced, someone just died or something horrific happened. And yeah, it's nice to read one like this. Story number two is called, I can't bear to tell my partner what I found in the freezer. See, like this might be horrifying. My partner had a very stressful day yesterday. Big academic exam, panic attack, no fun at all. It's every day this week, so there's more stress on the horizon. Last night, as we got into to bed, they realized that they'd use the last of the coffee and there wouldn't be any in the morning. I don't drink coffee myself, but I understand the seriousness of the statement. So I got out of bed, put my clothes on, drove to the store in the rain and got coffee. They protested, but I insisted. I'm here to support and I'd rather do it in the moment than first thing in the morning. It's honestly not that big of a deal. When I got home and I put the extra beans in the freezer, I saw the previous pack of coffee beans in the freezer at the ready for the morning. I combined it with the new bag and I threw away the evidence. Oh my god, two wholesome ones in a row. Is it our lucky day today or something? That's so cute. I thought you were going to say you found like a severed head in there or something. Like that episode where Bart thinks that Flanders is a murderer. <gasps> a human head. Really good episode. Oh, it's a Schumann Heads Farm Lettuce. Story number three is called Cousin's Gift, Ruin Christmas and Possibly My Relationship. I come from a big family. Our holidays involve extended family like second cousins, etc. My fiance and I are in our mid-twenties and there are a lot of cousins in their twenties and thirties. Last night we had our big Christmas party. It was fun to see everyone until it was time to exchange presents. My cousin Anna, not her real name, hands out pink envelopes to all the twenties and thirties men who have married or dated into the family. My fiancé received one and quickly put it in his pocket after opening it. I was distracted opening my gifts and I didn't ask to look at it. About 20 minutes later, my cousin Rachel, again, not a real name, pulls me aside and says that Anna is giving out cards with instructions on how to get a discount subscription. Oh my god, what? To her only fans? Rachel's boyfriend got one of the pink cards and showed Rachel because he was weirded out? What the hell? Why would somebody do that? You're at a family event. I'm pissed at this point because I suspect that my fiancé Beyonce's card also had an OnlyFans dip. Like, wait a second, sorry, but are they trying to break up the entire family? Like, why would they do that? How is that not gonna start arguments? Like this entire post, I'm pissed at this point because I suspect that my fiance's card also had an OnlyFans discount. So I asked to talk with him and he denies getting a card from Anna. I tell him I saw her hand you one and I watched you put it in your pocket. I go to grab his pocket and he suddenly remembers getting a card but claims that he didn't open it. I take it from him and of course it's already open and of course it's about the only fans i go back inside to confront anna and i find her already arguing with a different cousin who is upset because her husband has already tried looking at anna's page anna claims that she's only trying to get her business off the ground and no one appreciates all the hard work and skills it takes to be successful in a digital career she says that her gift is not sexual but it's just marketing oh my god some of the older relatives are starting to take sides too but they're mostly really confused about what's going on anna's mum started crying because of something 
something I said and my mum tried to get me to apologise, which pissed me off even more. At this point, I leave with my brother and his husband because I don't want to spend the night with my fiancé at home and I don't feel like going with parents when my mum is pressuring me to apologise. Oh, and surprise, surprise, Anna didn't give my brother's husband a card, so make of that what you will about the intent behind her gift. I'm seriously considering calling off the engagement over this and I'm pissed at my cousin for ruining both Christmas and my relationship. Whoa! That is so disrespectful. Ew, yeah, like this comment says. Oh my god, I would cut that cousin off completely. That's so inappropriate and rude and just bloody classless to do, especially at Christmas. Spell it out plainly for the grandparents so they can understand. She chose to do this at a family function, so make sure everyone understands. Yeah, I genuinely don't understand the thought process here. Like, how in your right mind would you ever think that was a good idea? I wake up in the morning to film and I'm like, you know what, I'm pretty sure I've read everything. Thing. And then we read something like this. This is the most trashy thing to do ever. I can't believe that. Like, it's not even cute or funny or anything. It's disrespectful and awful. And yeah, of course, the lying fiancé as well. I don't even know what to say, so I'm going to move on to the next post. Story number four is called My sister didn't get into a single one of her dream schools, and I'm living for it. I don't like my younger sister, YS. I will admit that. She's always been a daddy's girl and never faced a single consequence in her life, while my parents are not narcissists or abusive. They've always been softer on my younger sister than any of my other siblings. She's always been given privileges that were never given to any of the other siblings. It doesn't help that she's a selfish brat who's made it her mission to make all of her siblings' lives as hard as possible growing up. At some point, my younger sister realized that she can just lie and get away with it, or really do anything and not face any consequences, ranging from petty lying to get us all in trouble, to actual crime. She used to steal any cash that she could find from any of us. My parents defended her and brushed it off even after my older sister caught her on camera doing it. Younger sister is graduating from high school this year. My parents have been awfully quiet about her academics for the last two years, despite all of their other children having high marks academically, all now having college degrees. They could never stop gushing about my younger sister and how smart she was, until two years ago when she nearly failed high school by ditching for an entire semester. Her GPA is abysmal. She's barely graduating from what I've heard, yet my parents and younger sister still thought that she could get into a good school. My younger sister's dream school was Yale, with Harvard as a second pick. I'm not joking. Despite her graduation quickly approaching, I'd heard nothing about her college plans, and it turns out that my parents and she had kept it secret because she got accepted into zero of the schools that she wanted. They applied to 12, and she only got accepted into one. The school that she got accepted into literally accepts anyone with a pulse that can pay. What makes this more cathartic to me and makes me much pettier is when I and my older brother went to college, my father refused to use the money that he saved for our college on us, claiming that because we we got scholarships we didn't need it and he'd save it for our younger sister. I know for a fact that my younger sister is distraught right now. The point is mute anyway because she would fail or drop out. But for the first time in her life, she's actually facing consequences and I'm living for it. And after the buzzer update, people are still interested in this, laughing my ass off. I've not rubbed salt in the wound, even if I really wanted to. I'm too busy with my own life to be as petty as I want to be right now. Younger sister is going to a public university for the next two years. It has a 100% acceptance rate and is cheap. My parents say that she'll do great and go to a good school from there. That's 100% not gonna happen, lol. I did decide to actually talk to my dad, though, about the whole university fun shenanigans. It did go better than I thought it would, and I didn't need to ask about what vacations he plans on using it for now that younger sister won't need it. Not gonna go into details, but he did admit that he was wrong, and we'll provide our share in the cash amount if we want to buy a house at some point in the future. So win-win, I guess. Yeah, like this comment says, I saw the ditching school, and then her school of choice being Yale. Your parents made her delusional. Yeah, genuinely, and it's sad. Like, oh, what's that? I can't always get everything I want. Damn it. Okay, story number five is called I love my husband more than anything. I, 23 female, love my husband, 27 male, more than anything in this entire world. I would go to the ends of the earth for him if it'd make him happy. My entire life, I've been left behind or forgotten, but every day, he makes me feel wanted and loved. I want nothing more than to spend the rest of forever with him. Every day, I wake up and I really realize how lucky I am to have someone so kind and loving and supportive and gentle and understanding as him. I wish I could shout from the rooftops and let everyone know what an amazing person he is. We've been through a lot over the last couple of years, but it's only made our connection stronger. I wish I could get him everything he's ever dreamed of because he deserves it. Before he came into my life, I seriously thought that I was not worthy of true love, that I'd just end up rotting away in some hospital, but we've saved each other and every day is a blessing. That being next to him is all I could ever want and need. Oh, Oh, that's so beautiful. I was waiting for it to get bad. But
but it didn't, and that's amazing. Love that so much. Story number six is called, I know that my son isn't actually mine, and I haven't told anyone. I, 30 male, have been dating this girl, 27 female, for three years. I was her first serious relationship in a while. Before me, she was just casually seeing people. She told me that she was pregnant very early on into our relationship, which I thought was odd, but she insisted that it was mine. My son looks nothing like me. I have brown hair and green eyes. He has blonde hair and blue eyes. Although blonde hair and blue eyes does run on both mine and my girlfriend's side of families. So I figured that it was just genetics doing its thing. However, I still had a bit of doubt. So I got a paternity test without telling anybody, not even my girlfriend. And it came back that I'm not my son's biological dad. I was devastated, but I decided that I'm not going to say anything to anyone because realistically, it doesn't change much. I am still his father. I've been there since before he was born up until now. I make enough money to comfortably support her, so I'm not worried about child support. I don't even know if my girlfriend deliberately tricked me. Maybe she genuinely thinks he's mine. She may not even know who the biological father is, so I feel like bringing it up may cause problems. Edit, thank you for all the advice. I guess I was in denial and I have a lot of reflecting to do about this relationship. I do plan on telling my son once he gets old enough for the sake of possible health issues, and it can be up to him if he wants to try and seek out his biological dad. Wow, this subreddit is wild. So many unbelievable situations. Yeah, like this comment says, maybe she cheated, but maybe she didn't. But she's definitely been lying to you the whole time. She had to at least know the possibility was there that the kid wasn't yours, but let you believe that there was no possibility that it wasn't. The top comment says, honestly, OP, you should really tell your girlfriend the truth, not because you're leaving her or you don't want the kid, but if nothing else for the potential health and genetic issues, as well as the fact that most likely the kid will find out in the future, and the sooner you get ahead of that, the better. Yeah, oh my God, I can't even imagine being in a situation like this. Story number seven is called, I love when my husband has a bad day. Don't get me wrong, I wish every day is good for him, but when it's one of those crappy, dull days, unlike some people, he doesn't come home and shout, he doesn't slam around, he doesn't complain, he'll just walk through the door, drop his jacket and beeline straight for me. He'll practically jump on top of me and bury his face in my chest or down the side of my neck. I'll feel him readjusting himself until he's comfortable, take a few big sniffs, exhale and just sink into me. I'll rub his back and I'll kiss his head. Sometimes we end up lying there for an hour or more. Sometimes he falls asleep. I love hearing his breath change, his heart beats low, hearing the quiet sounds he subconsciously makes when I scratch that perfect spot. I love feeling that hand dance up under my shirt and cup on, always with a small chuckle from both of us. I love tracing my hand around his back, around his shirt, feeling every muscle as I whisper to him about my day. I love lying there and smelling him. He'll claim that he stinks after a long day at work, but to me, the smell is almost addictive, intoxicating. I'm a small woman, which makes this harder, but I'm willing to endure the weight just to enjoy those moments with him. I can't even explain how it makes me feel inside when I hear him taking those sniffs and feeling the tension leave his body. Nothing else matters in that moment. Nothing else makes me feel more like a woman and a wife. Oh, I love that so much. That was such a good surprise. I clicked on this one because I thought it was going to be like super dramatic or something. But no, it turned out to be super cute, which is even better. Story number eight is called My Kid Broke Out Expensive TV and I Want to Cry of Anger. I love that TV. It cost a lot. It was a great TV. I've just been playing some games on it. I hadn't even turned off my PlayStation 4. I just put in sleeping mode so I could put the kids to bed. She got a hold of a heavy toy, smashed it on the TV. The screen is now broken. I'm so angry I want to scream, but I can't. She's only two years old, doesn't know better. I feel so sad. I know it's silly for other people, it's just a TV, but that TV was comfort for me. I have no friends, I have no hobbies aside from the gym, but now how the fitness world works today. The gym mainly feels like a mental torment and a constant reminder that I don't look good enough and a reminder that if I enjoy food too much, I'll just gain weight. So I don't enjoy it that much, I do it because I have to. That TV was my peace of mind when my kids finally went to bed. It was my friend in the evening when I didn't have anyone to talk to. It meant something to me. And now it's gone and we don't have the money to get a new one. I hate this so much, but I can't get angry. I can only feel sad. Yeah, that is sad. And you shouldn't feel bad about feeling sad about this. But the good thing is when you do get a TV, imagine how happy you're gonna be. It'll be the best feeling ever. And like the top comment says, hey, check with your local Buy Nothing group on Facebook. You can post in there that you're looking for a TV and someone might have one for you. The next one is called, my girlfriend told me that I smell like a boyfriend and it felt good. I'm 25 male, known her 25 female for seven years and we've been dating for almost four. This summer was the longest that we got to stay together since we were mostly maintaining a long distance both back in our home country and in the US now. And a few days before she left, she told me that I smell like a boyfriend while cuddling. Now I always knew that I was gonna propose to her since she was everything to me. She changed me a lot, but in a good sense. But hearing that brought this warmth 
that I don't think I've even felt before. I've decided that I'll get a ring this winter. Nothing too fancy. I'll plan a surprise for her when she visits the next spring. Hope everything works out well. Oh, I'm so happy there's been some cute ones. And also, congratulations. That's bloody beautiful. Like this comment says, when you propose, ask her if you smell like a husband. Yeah, you have to do that. So cute. The next one is called, my girlfriend is upset that I didn't go to her brother's wedding with her because she was wearing a white dress. Last weekend, my girlfriend's eldest brother got married. She has one older brother and two younger ones. I was supposed to go with my girlfriend, but instead of wearing the dress that she bought when she went shopping with her mum, she wore a different one. It was a lacy white floor length one. I asked her if it was really appropriate to wear a dress like that to someone else's wedding, but she said that it's not a wedding dress. It sure seemed like one, but she said it was only $150 and not a wedding dress. I decided not to go because she was being so inappropriate and I thought it'd be embarrassing. I messaged her cousin that I might have been exposed to COVID and I couldn't come because I didn't want to make drama. I found out that she didn't change her dress before she went. I also found out she got there later than she was supposed to and she started to try and walk up the aisle to her seat after everybody else was in their seats and the wedding was about to start. Her dad stopped her and she had to sit in the back and her parents drove her back to her apartment so she could change dresses between the ceremony and the reception. Her cousin told me that she told everyone that since her brother is gay and there was no bride at the wedding, she didn't see a problem with wearing that dress. Her parents made sure that the photographer didn't take any pictures with her anywhere in them when she was wearing the white dress. She's still mad that I didn't go, but I think I dodged a bullet. She still doesn't think that she did anything wrong. Wow, so attention seeking. That's bloody awful. And they still don't think they did anything wrong. The parents handled this so well. And yeah, like this comment says, no way that she unintentionally got there late. She's an attention seeker. Yeah, a million percent. And that's enough for today. It's so wholesome memes time. When your squad has that one friend who's pure hearted and trusting. And so the rest of you have an unspoken agreement to protect them at all costs. Oh, they're so cute. They're like, oh, it's so sunny. <laughs> I can't see. They're so beautiful. And those two ones at the front left are so similar. I completely forgot what the meme said. When your squad has that one friend who's pure hearted and trusting. And so the rest of you have an unspoken agreement to protect them. Yeah, that's so cute. Sorry, the cats are too cute. I just washed my cow. Tell her she's cute. Wow, what a beautiful cow. <laughs> You're very cute, cow. I just washed my cow. I can't believe the stuff that we read or all the sentences that I never thought I'd say. Good night, moon. Good night, tree. Good night, ghost that only I can see. Oh my God, that's Jin to a T. He always has this terrifying stare and a lot of the time it'll be at something that isn't even there. It's so freaky and it's so accurate to this. Like maybe they do see something. Oh, the thought of that is so terrifying. And on that note, thank you for watching everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did, you know what to do. Make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day goes to Elizabeth. You need to do way more of these. Malicious compliance stories are the best. Yeah, 100%. That subreddit is so fun. I also feel like we need to check out that pro revenge one. And also maybe like Tales from Retail or Tech Support. Let me know down below your favorite subreddits, guys. And yeah, guys, thank you for all your support. It means so much to me. I hope you had a fun time today and I hope to see you tomorrow. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye! I'm getting married in two weeks and I'm totally screwed. I literally need to get this off my chest. I feel like I'm going insane. My fiance, Sarah, 28 female and me, 34 male, have known each other for about six years and engaged for one. Our wedding is scheduled to take place in just two weeks and I just witnessed something that's making me feel like I'm making the biggest mistake in my life. Tonight, Sarah and I were taking a rare opportunity to relax at home. Sarah was in the kitchen making dinner while I was out back working on one of my projects. We live on acreage and I'm building a fire pit in the back backyard that we're planning on using this bowl. Anyway, as you do when you're doing heavy labor, I get thirsty and I come back to the house to get a drink where I see Sarah at the counter preparing dinner and talking on speakerphone. I recognize the voice instantly as my brother-in-law Marty. Now, this is where my brain gets totally twisted. Marty asks Sarah where her sister Evelyn is as he's been trying to get in contact with her and she's not answering text messages. And I hear Sarah say to him, she just left here. She should be home in half an hour or so. It should be noted that Evelyn is Marty's wife of five years. I have to admit, I didn't immediately register what she just said because I went to the kitchen and grabbed a glass and asked Sarah, what was all that about? And she responds, Marty was looking for Evie. I see her text and I ask her, what are you doing? And she says, I'm texting Evie that Marty was looking for her. Anyway, I pour myself a drink, I sit down, I have a sip and then finally my brain starts to work. First off, I heard Sarah tell Marty that Evelyn was here. Evelyn was not here and the last time we saw her was yesterday when she came over to work on some last minute wedding decoration stuff with Sarah. 
error? Secondly, why is she texting Evelyn and expecting a response when I distinctly heard Marty say that Evelyn wasn't answering text messages? Lastly, why the hell would she tell Marty that Evelyn should be back in 30 minutes? Unless she either knows where she is, then why did she lie? Or she is right now in front of me texting her to tell her to get her butt home quickly? The only conclusion that I came up with is that Sarah is lying to Marty about the whereabouts of her sister, Marty's wife, and is probably warning Evie that Marty will expect her home in about half an hour. I then spent probably five hours concocting various explanations for this behavior, some decent, some downright horrible, and playing them back in my head. I wanted really badly to ask Sarah about this, but at the time, if what I think is going on is going on, then I doubt I'd get a straight answer, which brings me to about an hour ago. I woke up at around 1am to use the toilet, and I couldn't resist the urge to check Sarah's phone. We both know each other's pins, so it wasn't a difficult thing to do. Anyway, I grabbed the phone, retreated to the bathroom, and unlocked it, and yup, it was what I was afraid of and probably what most of you were expecting. Sarah's sister Evelyn has been having an affair for about six months with a co-worker, and Sarah has been helping Evelyn cover it up for almost that entire time. There are literally hundreds of texts between them discussing it, discussing the co-worker, discussing horizontal mumbo stuff, really embarrassing things about my brother-in-law, and probably uncharitable, just stuff that makes my stomach churn. And here's my soon-to-be wife going along with all of it without batting an eye. I took some screenshots of the entire thread, put the phone back where I found it, and then retreated to my home office to find myself here typing it all out on Reddit, simply so I can avoid the primal scream that wants to come out of my mouth right now. I am totally 100% screwed. Reddit, I cannot marry Sarah. I just can't do it. I can't think of any reasonable excuse she could offer me about assisting her sister in this affair and victimizing not only Marty, but their two-year-old daughter as well. On the other hand, myself, my family, Sarah and her family, have all sunk enormous amounts of money into a wedding that's supposed to happen in around two weeks. There's no way we're getting any of that money back. And on top of that, I feel like an absolute fool. Like, how did I not know this woman was like this? And what the hell am I gonna do? I can't marry her. I absolutely can't. However, I still want to. She's beautiful and fun and kind. And I thought we had a bright future ahead of us. She's never done anything wrong to me, but I just can't see her the same now. It's like a big black stain on an otherwise beautiful picture. I just don't know how the hell I got this so wrong. And I'm absolutely dreading doing what I know I need to do. I feel like I want to vomit or break something. Edit. Guys, you don't need to convince me to not marry Sarah. That's obvious. The wedding is off. I'm just trying to figure out my next steps and to work up the nerve to do it. There's an incredible amount of pressure on me from the expectations of everyone, but I'm not going to buckle under it. I just am not relishing having to deal with the fallout, and I'm more than a little angry that I'm in this situation. Edit 2. It's 5am. I have work in 3 hours, and I'm running off a couple of hours sleep. I'm going to take a shower and head into work a little early to avoid Sarah and stew on this. Thanks to the supportive people here, and a big raspberry to the deal holes who keep saying I should figure out whatever good reason my soon-to-be ex-fiance had for this garbage. Edit 3. I got into work around 7. No one was in the office, so I decided to start pulling off the band-aid and I called my brother. He lives in Australia, so he was still up after having just put his kids to bed. It was hard breaking the news to him about this, because I know he's laid out a huge amount of money for flights for him and his family to come. But to his credit as an older brother, he didn't mention it one time and he just backed me up. He made a great point too. He said, totally paraphrasing, you work in a job where you have to deal with liars and scammers day in and day out. I don't blame you for wanting to have somewhere to go where this isn't a concern. He was totally right about that and I get now why I'm reacting so strongly to Sarah's participation in this deceit. He also had a great idea. He was going to take his family down to Florida to do some sightseeing and visit the parks. Well, now the kids will be accompanied by their uncle as well. It should be easy since we're going to honeymoon there as well and we were planning on meeting them for a bit anyway. I'll just rebook everything to be closer to him and his family and I'll offer Sarah's ticket to either my sister or another family member. I haven't had time to read everyone's comments but I have answered a few right now. I'm just sort of making myself sick by drinking cup after cup of coffee and trying to distract myself until the day gets on enough where I can reach out to Marty. Edit number four, just did morning stand up. My stomach is doing flip flops from drinking about two pots of coffee since I got in here so early and I absolutely cannot focus and concentrate. I feel like I can't do anything really from my side until I tell Marty. So I'm just going to take a sick day and drive over to his house and see if he's around. If not, I'll call him and I'll track him down. Marty is a teacher who's on break right now and Evelyn works a 9 to 5 like me. So odds are good that this will work out. Wish me luck. Edit 5. I got to Marty's house a little later after 10am. He just put his daughter down for a nap and we had a long, frankly brutal talk in the kitchen. Basically, he suspected this for a couple of months but now Evelyn has been very good at covering her tracks. Obviously with the assistance of Sarah and a couple of their mutual friends. I unfortunately do not have all 
six months of text messages. Just a couple of dozen screenshots I sent to myself from Sarah's phone. But I gave him what I have and I offered to help him however I could. I'm a field analyst in the SIU department of a mid-sized insurer specializing in workers' compensation fraud. So I know a few things and a few people. Anyway, I'm now working from my laptop in my almost brother-in-law's kitchen, trying to salvage whatever I can. I'm going to talk to Sarah this evening and get the word out as fast as I can to my friends and family. Now that I know I won't screw Marty over. So far, I managed to rebook most of the honeymoon. Although I had a problem with the ticket because Sarah was flying under her maiden name. And our carrier has a surname rule for name changes. Anyway, they did allow me to cancel and get a partial refund and rebook to my sister. Who will be accompanying her two brothers and nieces to Florida in a couple of weeks. I'm holding off on cancelling the venues until after I talk to Sarah. Because I don't want to tip anyone off until Marty gets his chance to confront Evelyn. But I will absolutely be letting my family and friends know this afternoon sometime. And beg them to keep it close. I'm basically in a frenzy right now cancelling stuff I can cancel and I'm heading down to the bank in a few to open a new account and getting my bills and pay sorted out. The finances, some people have mentioned them but it should be pretty good. The mortgage is in my name since we were not married and I have the bigger income but Sarah did contribute about 20k versus my 60k towards the down payment. I will have to probably pay her out that money and some portion of the mortgage payments for the last 16 months but it could be worse. P.S. How come so many are confused regarding brother and brother-in-law? Edit number 6. I'm going to go silent for a while. This post has already been circulating around TikTok and has gone way, way, way beyond what I first thought it ever would when I was freaking out in the middle of the night. First off, I want to say something here. I do not hate Sarah. I don't approve of what she did. I frankly find it repulsive and I'm shocked by uncovering how two-faced she can be and how she treats people. But I don't hate her. I'm just incredibly sad about everything and the I'm screwed part of my post is really the short time frame I have to work under. Basically, our relationship is in a state where I cannot get married to her, but we're supposed to get married in two weeks. Maybe if we had two months or better yet a year or so to work through this, my approach might be vastly different, but I don't have that luxury. I have to move now. There's just no way I can enter into marriage with the state of our relationship that it's in now. So I'm not going to. End of discussion today, guys. Anyway, I'll report back later tonight with how everything today went. Hopefully it'll be less traumatic than I'm anticipating. Edit seven. I have no idea how long a Reddit post can be as I've never written such a long one before in my life. So I hope this goes through. It's about 8.30 p.m. right now and I'm writing this from my buddy's house. His name is Mark and a former co-worker of mine that is also in the same field of work. As I mentioned in a previous update, I work as a field analyst in the SIU department of a decent sized insurance carrier. For people who don't know what that is, I'm basically a private detective. My job is to investigate what we think might be fraudulent claims in regards to workers' compensation. Anyway, as I kind of hinted at, Marty asked me for my help in finding out who the other guy was that Evelyn was cheating on him with. All we had to go on was a name. Let's call him Jake. The first thing I did was not some major amount of sleuthing, but it was basically just going through LinkedIn trying to find the guy through Evelyn's connections, but that brought up nothing, which I thought was strange. Marty had told me that Evelyn was supposed to go out for drinks tonight after work, and that she said that she wouldn't be home until around 9 or 10. He didn't have to tell me what he suspected since I pretty much understood right away. I told him that I would help him, but he needed to come with me. I then contacted my buddy Mark, explained the situation to him, and had him agree to meet us later in the day. The first thing we did was drive over to Marty's parents' house so that they could watch their granddaughter. I don't know what Marty told them as I waited in the car. After that, we went to Evelyn's place of work. It's one of those large commercial strip mall type centers with all these nondescript offices in a row and a large non-gated car park. We drove around until we found Evelyn's car and then I had Marty unlock it with the second set of keys. I then gave Marty a voice activated recorder and a GPS tracker to place in the car. Once done with that, we left. We parked a bit down the street and we waited for my friend to arrive and for Evelyn to leave the business. Mark shows up about 20 minutes later later, hops in the car with us and around an hour after that, Evelyn comes out of her office with her two girlfriends and a tall, younger looking man with sandy blonde hair. They're obviously holding hands and I'm like, damn Evelyn, you're making it easy for me. I take a couple of photos from the car and then I wait for Evelyn to leave in hers and I start tracking her. At first I thought she might go right to a hotel or something, but she didn't. Instead, she drove to a reasonably nice bar and grill in a nice section of town and parked on the street. I drove by her as she was getting out of the car and entering the establishment and then found my own parking spot and went over the plan. First we sent Mark in since no one knew him. He had basically two jobs. First try to get any compromising pictures he could of Evelyn and Jake and second to be my alibi. Marty and I waited in the car for around 20 minutes until I got the first in the series of messages from Mark. They were pictures of Evelyn and Jake making out in front of their two female co-workers. Marty's suspicions were right. They were helping Evelyn hide the affair from him. He was obviously very upset and angry. Evidently one of the co-workers is married and as a couple they were good friends with Marty and Evelyn. Both of them have
having toddlers around the same age. I asked Marty if that's enough for him, but he says that he really wants to know who this guy is. I try to tell him that we can find out later, but he's practically begging me at this point, so I tell him to wait. I text Mark that I'm coming in, and then I enter the bar myself. The first thing I see is Evelyn and her crew laughing and drinking at one of those tall round tables near the front window as I enter. I stop for a moment, pretend to be surprised, and then call out to Evelyn. Evelyn, hi, what are you doing here? She's obviously shocked to see me, and everyone around her tenses up immediately. Evelyn quickly introduces me as her sister's fiance and says that we're getting married in two weeks. There are a lot of congratulations from everyone. I thank them and then I stick out my hand to the blonde guy and I introduce myself with my full name, hoping that he'll respond in kind. He does and I'm a bit taken aback. He's not named Jake. I introduce myself to everyone else and then I tell Evelyn that I'm here to meet a co-worker. I wave to Mark and then I excuse myself. Once I get over to Mark, I tell him the guy's name and we both whip out our phones and go to work. It doesn't take us long to find him. He's got social media profiles and a couple of court case judgments against him. Everything sort of falls into place when we find out that Jake is his middle name. At this point, I'm basically just grateful that Evelyn isn't cheating on Marty with two different co-workers. Turns out that Jake is 26, married and has a one-year-old daughter. This just keeps getting better or worse. Anyway, I text Marty the guy's name and I decide I want to push my luck and I tell him to wait a few more minutes. Basically, I'm playing babysitter here at the bar. I'm totally visible to Evelyn and her crew and I can see out of the corner of my eye that no one is particularly happy about this and my presence is really ruining the night. This is good. I let this go on for about 10 minutes and then I tell Marty to text Evelyn that he's going to spend the night at his parents' house with their daughter. It doesn't take long after that until I catch Evelyn taking out her phone, showing it to Jake and then everyone decided to pack up. Evelyn comes over to me, says good night and asks me if Sarah and I want to come over for dinner this weekend. I smile and I say that sounds like a great idea and I wish her and her co-worker a good night. Mark and I wait for them to leave. Then we pay our bill and we hurry back to the waiting Marty. There's a bit of hesitation here because we don't know exactly what Evelyn was going to do. Like I half assumed that she might have already booked a hotel room and was heading there, which would have made everything a lot more complicated and limited what I could do. But it turns out that tonight was probably meant to be just drinks at the bar and it wasn't until Marty decided to spend the night at his parents that it turned into something more. Evelyn made a beeline for home and we followed behind her, way out of sight and we parked down the street. It didn't take long until another car pulled into Marty's driveway and we saw Jake get out, go to the door, knock and be greeted by Evelyn and they went inside together. Now at this point it's about 7.30 and I have my own stuff to do tonight and I think that as a friend I've done pretty much all I can do for Marty and he can handle the rest himself. I mean I feel bad for the guy definitely but I don't want to get any more involved in this drama than I already am and being the wingman for him while he confronts his cheating wife is a bit much for me considering my situation. Marty says it's fine, that he'll do the rest of it himself. I guess he's more of a man than you thought Evelyn. He goes to Evelyn's car, retrieves my gear and we bid each other goodbye. That was almost two hours ago. I did get one message from Marty saying that it was done and he was going to his parents' house for real this time but my phone hasn't been blowing up so I don't know what's been going on with Evelyn and I've been at Mark since then. I think that basically concludes my part in Marty's story. If he was smart and listened to my advice he was recording with his phone when he entered the house. I'll find out later. Anyway my biggest priority now is to head home and tell Sarah that the wedding's off. She almost 100% is going to take it bad Lee. There's no way that she won't. But like I said, I just can't get married to her right now. I don't know what the future holds for us or if we'll be done with each other or not. But definitely, we're not getting married anytime soon. Also, for people who keep saying, why didn't you talk to her first? Why didn't you confront her? I have to say, are you people stupid? She stone cold lied in front of me to her brother-in-law that she's known for about 10 years and purportedly thinks he's a really great husband and father. Maybe you were naive enough to think that someone can lie that coldly to someone that they're supposed to care about and then tell you the truth, but I'm not wired that way. Until that moment, I never had cause to ever second guess Sarah or not trust her, but she was literally untrustworthy in front of my face, and I'm supposed to let it slide or expect her to be honest with me? I guess you don't know what it's like to have your entire view of someone shift in an instant. It's disorienting and frankly a bit panic inducing. I'm actually impressed I kept my head and I followed my instincts instead of pressing her right away because it led me to the truth. It would have been ridiculously easy for her to lie to me and then delete those text messages, and if she had had done that, then I would never have read the horrible thing she said, never seen how she can be so duplicitous and two-faced, and never realised how little I actually knew about her. I'm going home to talk to Sarah, I'll update later to let everyone know what the final verdict is, don't expect it to be a good one. Edit 8. Well, I had the talk with Sarah last night, it was pretty insane. I'm honestly burnt out and still exhausted even though I took another sick day, and slept in until almost a quarter to 11. Sleep deficit is real, I know everyone is thirsty for updates, but as much as it is therapy for me to 
write them, I'm absolutely drained. And as you may have noticed, I don't know how to be short, just call it a character trait from my profession, and the endless amounts of minutia-filled reports I've written. I will give the TLDR and I promise to do a proper update later. Long story short, I came home to talk to Sarah about cancelling the wedding and found her comforting Evelyn on the couch. I almost turned around and walked out, but I didn't. Words were exchanged, tears were had. People got really angry and the cops were cold. I collapsed and I slept for like 10 hours and my phone is practically glowing from the heat of a bajillion unread messages and missed calls. If it vibrates anymore, I'm going to take it to Evelyn's office and charge 10 bucks a minute to sit on it. Stuff is really up in the air. I have a lot to do today. My family already knew what was going on by yesterday afternoon, but I need to contact some friends today and get a move on other things. I'm just going to answer a couple and then bug out for a few to get some stuff done. First, I am not James Bond. I'm the guy that follows around the disabled construction worker to his Zumba class or skydiving lesson. I've been doing it for about five years and I'm pretty good at it. Nothing I did went beyond a $50 GPS that you can buy from Amazon and a tiny, tiny bit of social engineering. You might be surprised how far social engineering can get you, but whatever. Second, I'm off the clock on the mysterious case of Marty and the hobo bag hobgoblin. Whatever Marty does with the info he has, including contacting the other wife, is on him. I'm not interjecting myself into this mess any more than I have. Marty is a good friend but I have my own little world collapsing right now and now that I don't have my moral indignation to distract me, it's becoming a bigger burden than I would have been letting on. Third, I am not an aspiring screenwriter or novelist. I do however write a lot of reports. You have no idea. Most of my life is actually spent hunched over a laptop writing a report or transcribing statements. For every hour I spend doing field work, I probably spend 10 doing paperwork or research. Fourth, you are right that I was wrong to leave Marty to go in alone. I didn't have any fear, not even an iota, that Marty would do anything stupid, but I didn't properly take into account the risk to him. That's a personal failing of mine. It's not that I don't care, I just tend to estimate that other people handle things like I do, and hence Marty was doing something that I would do, so I didn't question it like I should have. I know this is a problem of mine and I'm working on it, but I'm also not in the best place emotionally, so my EQ was low in this situation. And last, people saying you don't know the whole situation. What if Marty was an abuser? Nobody. You don't know the whole situation. I do. I read six months of text messages. I know why Evelyn did what she did. I know how she feels about Marty. I know how my ex-fiance played along with this. I'm just not sharing it because it's vile. But I know, and it played a huge part in how I've acted in the last day and a half. Trust me, if Sarah had done something, anything other than encouraging and egging on Evelyn, we'd all probably not be here. But she did, so we are. Anyway, that's it from me. I'll try to update again in the next few days with the whole fallout but I'm probably going to be mostly off reddit for now. Best of luck to everyone and thank you all to the people backing me up it meant a lot to me and helped me keep me sane well some semblance of sane anyway edit 9. I tried posting an update to this subreddit under a new post because it's freaking huge but auto mod keeps eating it. Unless the mods decide to recover the post you can just check out my user profile for the next part of this messed up saga. Whoa oh my god. Okay I now understand this subreddit. Well I don't even know what to say. There are more updates to this, so if you guys want to see me read that, let me know down below. But yeah, that was obviously super long, so I won't read it in this episode. But yeah, let me know down below if you want me to read the updates. I don't even know what to say. That was a roller coaster. Can't even imagine how this situation would have felt. Yeah, wow, that was wild. My stepson called me dad in front of his friends. I've been with my wife for four years. She has a 12-year-old son from a previous relationship. He's never hated me, but it's obvious that he misses his dad. He's mainly just called me by my name. I don't necessarily like it, but I would never force him to call me dad. Today he wanted to go with his friends to an amusement park, and he asked me to come with them, which already made me so happy. So of course I said yes, but when his friends got in the car, there was one of them who I've never met before, and he introduced me as his dad. I started smiling when he said that, and I think he noticed, because he looked at me and rolled his eyes while laughing. Right now they're trying to win a big prize at the park, and I'm still smiling. I know this isn't huge or anything, but this is genuinely one of the happiest days I've had in a while. Oh, that's so beautiful. Congratulations. I can already tell we're going to make a lot of episodes on this. I'm gay and my wife doesn't know. My wife and I have been together for nine years, married for seven, but I know that I'm gay. I've never been attracted to another woman other than her, but I've been attracted to lots of men. I've never been in a sexual relationship with a man, but if I wasn't with my wife, I know I would be. My preferences when I'm by myself have only ever been over men, lol. But it's strange. My wife is my soulmate in the most absolute sense. It doesn't matter that she's a woman. I'm so in love with her mind and her heart and her as a human being that she could literally be in any body and I would love her and worship her. Even being with her sexually is incredible because it's her. I know this makes no sense and that's why I can't tell her. She would think that she isn't enough because she isn't a man but she's the other half of my soul and I could never hurt her or be without 
daughter. I think every inch of her body is beautiful and she lights me up like no other human ever could. She completes me and I know I won't need to be with anyone else, but I know no one will believe that. Is it possible to be gay except one woman? If so, that's what I am, lol. Edit, I realize now I'm probably on the bisexual spectrum somewhere and I'm content with that. I don't really need a label. Oh, and to those calling me a pervert, a degenerate, a fetishist, etc. for being attracted to men, I suggest that you try replacing the hate in your heart with love. It worked out very well for me. The top two comments say, Labels are so pointless at the end of the day. You're attracted to men and you're over the moon for your wife. Just loving her is most important. And then the original poster says, You're right, I think I've worried and I've psyched myself out over the label. When actually, I guess that's pretty unimportant if I never want to be with anybody but her anyway. I view sexuality as a spectrum. You might be bi in that you're 99% gay and 1% straight and your wife ignites the 1%. As long as you're happy with your wife and she's happy with you, that's what matters. Yeah, and it was so beautiful the way they were talking about their wife. Like there's a lot of love here and you can tell. In the first episode, we read a post that was called I'm getting married in two weeks and I'm totally screwed. And there's a couple of updates here. Hi, it's me again. I want to thank everyone who sent me kind messages and support here on Reddit and even on other platforms. This has really blown up and frankly, it's totally bizarre to see my life plastered all over the internet. But it's also nice to see so many people seeming to be genuinely concerned for me. It helps a lot. At first, I had a bit of trepidation about how visible this became. Like, what have I done? But since this past weekend, I decided to just just roll with it. After all, the cat is already out of the bag and I really believe I've done nothing wrong here. Despite a small minority of commenters saying otherwise, I guess there's a lot to go over and so much has happened. Most of it, if I'm honest, hasn't been that great. Well, it's actually been downright crappy, but I'll get to that. For people who are just following along, the link to the original post is here. First off, I left Mark's house pretty late last night. Sarah already knew I was out quote-unquote discussing business with him, although she had no idea the business was actually her sister's affair, but still, it was getting to an unreasonable hour, mostly because I was trying to get up the nerve to go home and face her. After about two or three pep talks from Mark, I finally got off my keister and I texted Sarah that I was coming home and I left in my car. As I said in the last update, I was pretty surprised when I got there because when I walked into the house, Evelyn was crying on the couch with Sarah. I hadn't seen Evelyn's car in the driveway when I came home, so this was probably the last thing I was expecting. This was not how I imagined this going down and I knew that Evelyn's presence was going to make a bad situation a million times times worse. Still, I had a timetable that I wanted to move on. I had friends I needed to notify and wedding preparations to cancel and the proverbial clock was ticking in the back of my head. When I entered the room, both Sarah and Evelyn looked up at me in acknowledgement, but the tirade of accusations never came. I just stared back, raising my eyes in question. The moment passed and Evelyn went back to crying, Sarah back to comforting, and I let it awkwardly hang in the air for half a minute while I thought. It seemed that Marty hadn't mentioned my assistance in the uncovering of Evelyn's affair. I decided to play dumb. Not for any reason besides I wanted to see how Sarah reacted. I took a seat on a recliner, I put down my laptop bag and I took my phone out of my pocket. I made it seem like I was just fidgeting with it and then I asked them, what's going on? Evelyn just continued to cry but Sarah looked at me and said, Marty is divorcing Evie. Well yeah I figured as much. I decided to push forward with the obvious question. What for? I asked her. Sarah stopped patting Evelyn's back for a moment and looked at me. I could almost see her face twist and contort. Imagine the look of five year old makes when you tell them to eat their broccoli or finish their lima beans. Evelyn shot Sarah a look that I didn't need to be assisted to understand and there was a pregnant pause until Sarah finally said she cheated on him. Now I have to admit this response freaking floored me. This was absolutely not what I was expecting. Sure the more cynical readers here might think well the cat's out of the bag so there's no point in hiding it and yes that's true but it's also true that she could have just as easily feigned ignorance or even worded it another way like Marty accused Stevie of cheating. Instead of basically confirming it to my face, maybe I'm being pedantic here, but it's part of my job to pay attention to not only what people say, but how they say it. Evelyn wasn't happy about this. She kind of crumpled into the couch a bit and did this strange combination of a sigh and a sob at the same time. I wanted to press on, go for the gold, so to speak, but I must have stammered a bit. Sarah probably interpreted as shock, and well, she would have been right in a sense, just not how she assumed. Did you know? Sarah didn't say anything. She just nodded, her hand still rubbing 
grabbing her sister's shoulder. I didn't hesitate and I asked the obvious follow-up, how long? The answer came back a lot easier than I thought it would. Six months. I was shocked by how easily she admitted to it. Evelyn was shocked as well. She smacked her sister's hand off her. And I think even Sarah was a little shocked at saying it out loud. I leaned back in the recliner and I rubbed my face. Time to tug the rest of the band-aid off. We're not getting married. There were two looks like stunned goats and a chorus of, huh? What? Huh? What? From both sisters. I stood up and I repeated myself. We're not getting married. I can't marry someone who'd cover up adultery. Especially not for six months. Sarah sprang off the couch and opened her arms. The body language was, you can't be serious. But I put my hands in front of myself. I'm serious. I don't like this. Not one bit. I don't like that you took part in this and I can't get married to you now with how I feel. It'd be a mistake. The waterworks started immediately and even Evelyn did that thing with her mouth that looks like a perch trying to suck air. There were wails from Sarah. Accusations of not loving her. Appeals to my sense of duty. To the loss of money. The inconvenience to all of our friends. The embarrassment of it all. It was frankly nothing I hadn't already thought about. But it definitely felt different hearing Sarah say it through body racking sobs. It was at this point I probably made a big mistake. Well maybe not because I have no idea how long Marty would have kept my involvement in everything off the books. But in an effort to convince Sarah of the finality of it all. I said look I already cancelled the honeymoon. It's not happening. I knew that was a bomb the second it left my mouth and the explosion was damn near immediate. Evelyn to her credit had always been pretty quick on the uptake which is probably how she managed to fool her husband for so long. I could almost see the realisation dawning on her when she put it all together with my appearance at the bar earlier in the evening. She screamed you son of a biatch and flew across the room at me. Now I'm not a huge guy but I'm no slouch either. But the force that Evelyn flung herself at me had me staggering backwards and I barely had enough time to get my hands up before she started raking at my face with all her fingernails. I almost lost the phone that I still had in my hand, but I still managed to push her away and say very loudly, Evelyn, get off me. Sarah, get your sister under control. Evelyn made another lunge for me, but surprisingly, Sarah did exactly what I asked her and wrapped her arms around her sister's waist and held her in place. I looked at Evelyn and I yelled, get out of here right now or I'm calling the police. Holding my phone up for emphasis, Sarah asked both of us to calm down. She said to me, she doesn't have anywhere to go right now and Marty took her car keys. That explained the lack of a car in the driveway, but I didn't care. I was 100% done with Evelyn and I was going to make sure that she knew it. I marched into my home office and I locked the door and I dialed the police. I told them I'd been attacked by my fiance's sister and I'd locked myself in my office, that I was bleeding from my face, Evelyn had scratched me pretty good along the side of my left eye and that my vision was blurry and I feared for my life. I even told them that I recorded the entire altercation on my phone. Right as I was finishing up my conversation, Sarah comes knocking on the door. Please come out, we need to talk about this and please, I love you, don't do this. We don't need to do this and even Evelyn is sorry, she wants to apologise. I'm pretty sure that last one was a lie but Sarah was obviously losing her crap. I didn't answer her and her attempts to cajole me out of the office and it ended probably right when the police rocked up to our front door. I could hear Sarah talking to them and I decided to come out. The cops were two males, one of them looked younger than me, maybe around Sarah's age and the other one looked older and more annoyed about life in general. I introduced myself, pointed at Evelyn, stating that she attacked me and offered to show the cops the recording I made. The younger one asked me if I wanted to press charges and I said yes. He asked me again if I wanted to press charges. I said yes again. At this point, both cops looked at each other and before the young cop could even open his mouth again, I said yes damn it, I want to press charges. I have video evidence and this is going to court or else I'm going to call up your boss. I dropped his name here and asked him to come down and do it himself. I think they were pretty surprised that I knew his name. Not that we're friends or anything, but given my line of work, I spend plenty of time interfacing with local law enforcement and I've met most of the brass or talked to them on the phone a couple of times in the last few years. Honestly, at this point, I was getting pretty hot under the collar and while I get what these guys were thinking, I don't agree with it at all. Facts are facts. Sure, I might not be bleeding out on the floor, but Evelyn assaulted me in my own home and I wanted her gone. Thankfully, the situation didn't immediately escalate and the two officers handcuffed Evelyn and put her in the back of the patrol car. She was squealing and crying like some sort of gibbering maniac the entire time. Sarah wasn't much better. She just kept going, no, please, no, over and over again. At this point, the younger cop circled back and asked if everything was okay here. I just told them I was going to go to bed. He asked Sarah again and she didn't immediately answer, so he goes, is everything okay here, ma'am? It was obvious what he was fishing for. At this point, I really disliked the guy, but I bit my lip. Sarah, finally realizing that the cop was addressing her, just nodded at him. Obviously, the guy is not satisfied with this and starts to ask her again, at which point I interject and say, if you want to go on a fishing expedition, you might want to do it over there on the lawn where my doorbell camera isn't recording you. I think at this point, I'd push my luck with this guy one 
one too many times, but what could I do? I think I was probably about 30 seconds from getting the cuff slapped on me until his partner came up and basically pulled him away. He was an older man, probably in his late 50s, and probably didn't want to process two arrests right at the beginning of his shift, especially when one of them was going to be way more trouble than it was worth. I'm pretty sure he talked him out of it and they left, carrying Evelyn away and hopefully out of my life forever. At this point, I'm thinking about if I want to stay here or not. The fact that my parents lived a couple of hours away, combined with the thought about how poor I'm going to be in the short term, ruled out either their place or a hotel, so I just decided to sleep in the guest room. Sarah made some futile efforts to get me to engage with her in conversation or to sleep in our bed, but I just told her that we'd talk tomorrow and that I was hired and I didn't want to be disturbed. Thankfully, she let me be and I crashed hard, harder than I had in years, which pretty much brings us up to speed on the last update. But dear friends of Reddit, let me tell you this, the next day was by far the weirdest day of my life. To start with, I woke up at 11 a.m. Sarah was still home. She cleaned the house from top to bottom. I mean, the floor sparkled, the toilet shined. I could lick the linoleum in the bathroom and it'd probably be minty fresh. She'd obviously been busy, but when she saw me, she sort of hovered out of immediate range. Not quite engaging, but looking like she wanted to say something. I get it, last night was traumatic for everyone and she was probably uncertain. Like, did I just cancel the wedding in the heat of the moment? Was I serious about this? Was I really angry? I took a deep breath and I told her that we needed to finish talking. She tried to sit next to me on the couch and I thought about rebuffing her, but I didn't. We were not getting married, but I didn't need to act like I hated her because truthfully, I didn't. I was disappointed in her, decently disgusted by some of the things I'd read in her text exchanges between her sister, but we were both hurting here and I didn't want to make it any worse or escalate things to the point where life could get any more complicated than it already was. It took some more convincing on my part for Sarah to truly and fully believe that the wedding was off. She was not taking it well. Hell, that's an understatement. She was a wreck. I think she was hyperventilating a few times. I was holding it together better, but obviously not only was this my idea, I had also had longer to come to terms with it. Finally, she asked the serious question, so what about us? I know I'm going to get a lot of hate from people for this, especially the kind of Redditors that think that every infraction in a relationship is grounds for nuking it from the orbit. And indeed, one could even say that me calling off the wedding was like dropping a Moab on our six-year partnership. But truthfully, I didn't have an answer for Sarah in that moment. I just didn't know and I told her so. I said I read all the text messages and it showed me a side of her that I didn't know existed and that I wasn't certain about her or our relationship anymore. I said I couldn't understand why she would go along with Evelyn putting down Marty and joining in and even egging her on in cheating on not only him but their daughter too. She just kept saying, I know, I know, it was wrong, I know. I asked her for an explanation but she couldn't provide one. She just said that she got carried away and said that she had to choose her sister. I told her I thought a good sister was someone who kept you on the straight and narrow and didn't give you a free pass to be a douchebag. She agreed with me and she said that she would be better but that Evelyn had always been the boss when they were kids and she was always the follower. I get this, I have an older sibling too and while I'm a bit more independent, I also spent the last 18 years of my life with him living on the other side of the planet, except for the odd occasional visit around Thanksgiving or Christmas. But still, maybe I had a leg up on Sarah because my other sibling was a decent guy while Ethelin was a piece of trash. Now here's where I got the second major shock of my life in like 48 hours. Sarah says to me, it's not fair, it's not fair. What's not fair? I ask her. You were sexting that bimbo wife Mandy girl on Instagram last year and I got over it. I was so hurt, but I got over it. Why can't you get over this? Why? Huh? What? What the hell is she talking about? Who is this bimbo wife Mandy? Like I have no clue. I ask her if she was high or having a psychotic break. Like okay, yeah that was mean of me, but I have absolutely not been doing cyber sex or sexting or whatever with anyone, especially not some Instagram girl. I'm protesting pretty loudly at this point and Sarah is yelling at me through her tears, telling me that she saw the messages last year and that she decided to not confront me because I'd stopped it. Evidently she'd been checking my social media from my home computer while I'm at work, which should have been really boring because I have only family and a couple of work friends on there. I try to make this case to her, offering to let her log into my accounts and check for herself, but she's just calling me a liar and a pervert and all sorts of crap. She starts throwing stuff at me and so things are getting out of hand and I tell her that if she throws one more thing, I'll have her taken out of this house, just like her sister. She swears at me and stomps off to the master bedroom and slams the door. Now, at this point, I'm so damn confused. I barely even know what to think. I head into my office, I fire up my desktop and I type bimbo wife Mandy into Google. Sure enough, there's an Instagram, a Twitter, a Reddit even, and of course, an OnlyFans. I click on one of the Instagram links and up comes a post of an extremely busty woman, like clearly pushing the limits of science and technology. And oh, guess where she's from? Australia. Well, everyone, remember all the nice stuff I was saying about my brother? Guess
guess who was staying with me last Christmas all the way from Australia? Guess who I told? No way. Sure, go ahead and use my office computer to play games if you have jet lag. As far as I can tell, my brother, after his wife and kids went to sleep, logged into either Instagram or OnlyFans or something, and was probably paying money to sex with this girl. What a great guy. Well, no way. Now, I would love to call my brother and not only confirm my suspicions, but also give him a goddamn earful, but it's like two or three in the morning, so it's gonna have to wait, but I am crawling the walls here trying to sort out how I feel about everything. I feel totally let down by everyone. I think to myself, damn, what is this world coming to? For a brief moment, I try to connect the dots between whatever the hell Sarah saw my brother do and what she did with Evelyn, but try as I might, it doesn't really come together. Maybe she's a more tolerant or forgiving person than I am, which is why she didn't confront me when she saw this, but I wish she had. It would have given me an opportunity to directly tell her my whole personal stance on these things and to even show her how I'd act. It might have influenced her in a good way later on, or maybe it wouldn't have mattered. I don't know. All I know is that this post is becoming a novel and I've blown off most of the morning when I should have been working to get this out of my head and onto this page. I feel better for doing it, but there's still probably another two or three posts left to tell. I'm not going to post them to this subreddit anymore. I'm not sure if they'd even let me, but I'll try and quietly update my profile in the next day or two with the rest of the blowout, talking to my brother, talking to my parents and Sarah's parents, and finally where Sarah and I stand. One thing I can say, however, is it seems like most of my immediate family relationships are incredibly strained for various reasons. My parents are largely supportive, but that's becoming less so now that the reality of the financial loss is setting in. Yeah, the marriage is still off. That was pretty much a certainty from the get-go. Sarah's parents are a bit more pissed, and I'm sure they're sticking pins in voodoo dolls crafted in my image right now. Evelyn, for people who are wondering, is no longer in jail. She got Sarah to bail her out, and I even laid into Sarah for that, calling her her sister's underling, which I think actually struck a chord with her because she wrote like a 20-page letter about how her sister always during her entire childhood. I've read it twice now, and I wish we'd talked about this pretty much at any time within the last six years. Maybe things would be different now, I don't know. Anyway, Reddit, if anyone is still interested, expect a final chapter of this saga in like a day or two, and maybe a follow-up after the former wedding date passes. Oh my god, this has been unbelievable to read. And yeah, I'll definitely read the last update, but not in this episode. That was so wild. I follow my wife's Reddit account just to anonymously give her awards. Oh, is this a wholesome one? My wife does a lot for the family and also works. She's also struggled with mood issues, better now, and likes to mindlessly scroll Reddit to pass time. When she was more depressed, she would literally spend hours a day on Reddit and not even realize it. As she started improving, she started posting tips to help others. And at one point she got an award. She literally lit up that day and was so excited to tell me that she'd gotten her first ever Reddit award. I decided to follow her and now watch her posts. Not because I'm worried about the content or anything, but when I see that she's gone a couple of months without getting an award, I'll wait for another good post that I would have awarded for myself anyway and anonymously give her one. Oh my god, that's so cute. I like wholesome confessions. They're so nice. I saw my husband and my sister naked in my kitchen. Oh, okay, so this one is not wholesome. I can't move. If I move, it becomes real and I have to accept what I saw and think of what's next. I came home from work early and I saw my sister's car thinking maybe she was dropping off some food from her job. But no, I walk in and I see my husband and sister naked in my kitchen. The kitchen I paid for. As soon as I registered what I saw, I got into my car and left. I kept driving, just driving, driving, driving until I found the hotel that I'm at now. I don't want to believe it. I don't know what to do. My sister, my only family and my best friend friend and the one who's supposed to be there for me and support me, my husband, my person, my other half, the one who's supposed to love and respect me, the two most important people in my life have ruined everything. I've blocked them both on my phone. I don't want to hear any of the BS excuses they'll come up with. I don't want to confront this. I want to go back to this morning when everything was fine. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. That's bloody awful. There's an update here. Sorry for not replying to comments and not updating. Things have been hectic. I didn't think I needed to explicitly say this, but by naked I meant they were butt naked and doing the horizontal mumbo in the kitchen. I admit mentioning that I paid for the kitchen was odd and kind of funny, but anyone that knows me knows that the kitchen is my pride and joy. So yeah, when I saw my sister and husband doing it in my kitchen, it stuck with me. And yeah, they did see me. When I got to the hotel, I cried for a few hours and then I just wanted to tell someone, anyone, the two people I would talk to when something happened in my life were the two people I needed to talk about. And it was 11 something in the evening, so I wasn't going to disrupt my friend's evenings and burden them. Them. So instead I came to Reddit thinking that not many would see it. The response I received was overwhelming. I want to say thank you to everyone that sent me kind words and advice. Thank you so much for all the virtual hugs. I only commented once. That's because I had so many things to think about and do. 
do. I appreciate all the love and support. There was so much amazing advice given in the comments. Although a lot of it was American based, I still appreciate it. But one thing I did see a lot was to unblock them and keep the text and calls as evidence. So I did do that. After posting and another good cry, I knew that I had to get my stuff together. I didn't have my sister or any family to help, so I had to do it myself. I started researching what my next steps were. In the morning, my friend called me saying that my sister contacted her, wondering if I'd been in contact with her. I told her what happened and she very kindly offered her spare room and her day off work to help me sort stuff out. I called in sick at my job and my friend helped me get things done. I got in contact with my friend who works at a bank and she helped me start sorting my financials. My friend also found me a lawyer to consult with. After my phone consultation with the lawyer, I was so overwhelmed. I know now why so many men don't divorce their cheating husbands. It's a lengthy, expensive and emotionally draining process. I fortunately make a stable income and can support myself and we fortunately don't have kids. I have to remember that things aren't going to happen in one day. It'll all take time. As for the house, unfortunately his parents bought it for us. And to be honest, after what I saw, I don't want it. I'll try and get reimbursed for my beloved kitchen. Otherwise it can burn for all I care. This has been super draining, but I knew I had to talk to them. I already knew there was no coming back for my husband. And when I checked his messages, they said exactly what I thought they would say. I'm sorry, it's not what it looks like. We didn't mean for it to happen. Please come home. I love you. Blah, blah, blah. Just absolute BS. A small part of me thought maybe I could find it in me to forgive my sister as we only have each other. But after I opened her messages, all hope was lost. She used the same excuses we heard our father use when he cheated on our mother and beat us. She said the same things our mother would say when she would excuse our dad's behavior and also beat us. I spoke to her this morning and I asked her to tell me straight up who, what, where, when and why. She told me back in July when I went on a girl's trip. She was at our house and I joked to my husband that I would cheat on him on the girl's trip because that's what always happens. Oh my god, what? He said nah and they joked about it but she said that he could get even with me and they ended up doing it once. One time led to two, to three, to whenever they could do it. There was never any evidence or signs of anything that I was going to even think about cheating. I told her we were done and there's nothing she could do to bring us back together. I later received a call from an unknown number. It was my mum who I haven't spoken to in seven years. Turns out that my sister has been in contact with her and told her what had happened and my piece of crap mum, the same woman who beat me for breathing wrong, had the audacity to say that this is what I get for taking her daughters away from her. Oh my god. It hurts so much. I know things are going to get messier and this is going to be a long few years. I've now lost all my blood relations. I need to get all my crap and find a new place. I want to show that I can and will thrive without them. Again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the love and advice. And to the people in the comments that could relate to me, I'm so sorry. It's hard to believe how bloody awful people can be. But yeah, like the top comment says, I'm very proud of you for taking charge and standing up for yourself. I know it's very hard, but you've got this and you will get through this. I can hear my neighbor talk to his cat. Every day when my neighbor comes home from work, he unlocks his door and says, Hello, Kevin. And Kevin the cat meows back in greeting. Oh, that's so cute. Our apartment building is small and I can hear nearly everything that happens in the communal hallways in my living room. I don't know my neighbors at all, not even his name, but I know his cat. My neighbor also likes to smoke a lot of weed. No shame, I like to indulge too. Just not every day. I work from home and I live alone, but hearing, Hello, Kevin, has become a part of my routine. It makes makes me smile every time. Yesterday I heard the normal hello Kevin greeting and Kevin's meow. I could later smell that he was smoking. Then I heard him go into the laundry room and come back. But then I heard something odd. Kevin's meowing was super loud and he sounded pissed. I waited a little while but Kevin persisted. I opened up my door and I saw Kevin outside the neighbor's door. He was practically screaming and jumping up to hit the door with his little paws. Inside the apartment I heard my neighbor echoing Kevin's cries. My neighbor sounded frantic and desperate calling Kevin over and over again. I walked up to the door and I knocked. I heard my neighbor pause and then quietly with amazement and perhaps fear repeat, Kevin? At the last minute I decided to dart back into my apartment and softly close the door, listening while my neighbor let Kevin in. He whispered How did you do that, Kevin? I've been laughing to myself about it since it happened imagining my stoned out of his mind neighbor contemplating how his cat human knocked on his door. Oh right, okay so you went and knocked on their door and they thought it was their cat. Wow, that's so beautiful. Edit, hello everyone. I'm so glad that this is... It makes me so happy that this has been a bright spot in Pepple's day. I'm dumbfounded by how much attention this has gotten. Thank you so much for the awards. I wish I could respond to every comment and tell you all how amazing I think you are. I'm a long-time Reddit user and I never thought some dumb thing I did would make so many people laugh. I don't have any pictures of Kevin to share. I don't want to invade his privacy. I only see him when he monitors my trips to and from my car. But I can give a description of what he looks like. Kevin's a small cat that has long greyish hair. He looks fluffy but... 
not chunky. Sorry, chonky. He was very skittish and kept his distance. So I think he's probably pretty shy and aloof. He has tremendously big eyes, but I'm not sure if that's his panicked look or not. Sounds like Jin. He's grey, fluffy, and not too chonky. I hope everybody has a great day and week in life. Give your pets a pat for me. Oh, that's so beautiful. And it's so nice to start the episode with a wholesome one. As I'm sure you guys know, some of the posts on here can be bloody devastating. So it's so nice to read a positive one. I laced my braid with thumbtacks as self-defense. I, 28 female, was 24 years old at the time. And I worked in this independent kitchen with no HR department as a cook for several years. There was a brief period of time where a co-worker was pulling my hair repeatedly after being asked and told not to. He didn't even stop when my managers told him to F off. So I got permission from my sous chef to take things into my own hands. I braided my hair for work one day and I wove thumbtacks into it. I was met with a yelp when he tried to pull my hair again and he never did it again. This has been on my mind lately because it was a pivotal moment for me in the way that I allowed people to treat me. Wow, that's incredible. What kind of absolute ding dong is going to pull somebody's hair every day? That's so annoying. And yeah, honestly, that's so deserved. My wife sleeps like an a-hole. To start, I love this woman more than life itself. She's the most selfless, supportive and loving person I've ever met. Every single day that I'm with her, I'm a better person for it. That being said, she sleeps like an a-hole. We start all cuddled up like a Disney movie, snug as a bug in a rug. And then when she falls asleep, we begin the nightly turf war that is our bed. She'll often start with a classic starfish manoeuvre, spreading her arms and legs to establish a beach head to begin her insurgence. She'll then begin to slowly rotate her body in a counterclockwise fashion until she's sleeping diagonally across the bed, establishing an ingress with her feet and legs. She brings her upper body forward, pinning me in and leaving me exactly two inches for my insomniac ass to try to sleep on. I then try to slowly slide out of bed and sleep on her side, in which her reaction is to do the same thing five minutes later. I've tried everything. We bought a California king size bed for our tiny bedroom. I establish a green zone with pillows. I've even gently picked her up and slid her to her side to no avail. The thing is, I can't sleep in an empty bed anymore because I love this dummy so much. It's literally kept me up nights that I end up going to work without any sleep. And then I can only sleep the next night out of sheer exhaustion. She also works hard, so I can't wake her up. But God, I'm so tired. Oh my God, that would be so awful. What's the solution to something like this? Because they obviously don't mean to. Like they're asleep. They're not doing this on purpose. The top comment says there is only one solution. Bunk beds. Okay, hopefully there's a second solution. Good luck with this. My parents are trying to control my wedding because they want me to invite my brother. He has pica and I'm not inviting him. For anyone who doesn't know, pica is an eating disorder that causes people to eat things that are not food, like rocks and drywall and chalks and nails and plastic. He developed it as an adult and he refuses to see a doctor or have treatment. My parents say if I avoid having the things that he eats at my wedding, he'll be able to go without being disruptive. So no flowers, no paper, no lace on the bride's veil, no plants in soil for our centerpieces. There are other things like my brother will eat rocks, but these are the main ones. I'm not changing my wedding for a 35 year old man who likes to eat dirt. It's not my problem, no matter what my parents say. And I'm sure as hell not telling my fiance that she can't have flowers or can't wear the veil she wants. Just complaining and venting because it's been a very trying time dealing with my parents on this. Oh my God, the top two comments. Now I'm just imagining him munching away at the veil during the ceremony. No, 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 he legitimately ate some of our Nana's lace tablecloth and needed surgery to remove it because he ended up with a blockage. I'm not even joking. So my parents tried to ban my fiance from having the lace veil that she's buying for her own wedding. It makes me angry that this is the hill that they want to die on. But is it uncontrollable? Like this comment says, as someone with pica, your brother can absolutely just bring his own chalk to munch on. If he's making it other people's problem, he's just a ding dong. He could chew on crushed ice while he's there and be fine. If not, he's being disruptive on purpose. Yeah, like surely they're not just going to see the flowers at the wedding and immediately run over and start eating them. But yeah, you're right. It's your wedding and there are going to be flowers and rocks and lace and stuff. I'm interested to know what happened with this. They're not my kids and not my problem. About a month ago, I found out that both of my children were the results of my soon-to-be ex-wife's affairs. I've had a feeling for a while now that both of them were not mine. Six years ago when my son was born, I was the happiest I've been in my entire life. I'd married my best friend, we had a child together and everything seemed amazing. That was until he started getting older. After a few years, I started to have doubts that he was actually mine. He did not look like my child. The more he started to grow, the more I realized just how different he looked compared to what I would expect a child of mine to look like. I'm not petty or paranoid enough to let that alone drive me. It was my blank of a wife that really 
set my alarms off. Whenever she went out, she never went where she said she did. She would have huge holes in her schedule she could never explain to me. She would refuse to allow me to interact with anyone from her workplace. And a close friend of hers accused her of flirting with her significant other at the time. It didn't help that soon after our son was born, her lies started to catch up with her. Still though, I loved her like the fool I was. She told me up and down how much she loved me whenever one of her lies caught up with her. She had convinced me that despite the fact she was a lying and manipulative woman, that she wasn't a lying manipulative you know what. Last year she got pregnant again and I still held out a small bit of hope that it was mine. But when her daughter was born, it was obvious that she was mixed race. I refused to sign the birth certificate and the paternity test I demanded afterwards proved my suspicions right all along. Neither of them are mine. The day I got those test results were the day I filed for divorce from the you know what and I walked away from the family that I created. I knew that it would destroy her son's life to see me walk out. Despite my concerns, I was the best dad I could be to him. I loved him with all my heart and I put 110% into being the father that he deserved. Now though, when I see him, I'm filled with disgust. Disgust for my awful wife, disgust with myself for not trusting my instincts and disgust that the last six years of my life have been for nothing. I've been told by multiple people now that I'm a monster for leaving my son like this. My ex-wife tried on multiple occasions since I moved out to use him to guilt me into getting back with her. She'll have him call me at random hours of the night crying and begging for his dad to come back. The day I moved out, she paraded him into the room as I packed my things to show me how much damage I'm doing. In every conversation that is brought up both online and off, I'm berated and shamed that despite the fact I'm not the boy's biological father, I am his dad. What I've sadly now realised is that to most, my own feelings mean nothing. My parents are my only supporters through all of this. My own siblings are calling me despicable for abandoning a child like that. My feelings of betrayal and sadness mean nothing because there's a child involved. I know it's not his fault. I know that the man he called his father for his entire life just walked away. But why am I expected to man up? Why should I have to pretend everything's fine and that I don't feel contempt for this entire situation? Why should I put my own life and feelings aside? I never was the boy's father. I loved him like one and honestly I still do. But I would come to hate and contempt him if I had to play that role and hate myself for not standing up and taking my own life back into my own hands. He's not my child and even though it's not his fault, he's not my problem anymore. Edit. Well, this post certainly blew up. I guess airing my dirty laundry accomplished something. Anyway, I've seen a few common questions so I'll answer them. Her son knows the truth of why I left. I sat down and I told him that I'm not his father and that his mother lied to me and cheated on me. I made it clear that I'm not mad at him, that it's not his fault this is happening and no matter what, I'll still think he's an amazing kid. Some are saying that I never loved him or was always looking for a way out. It's hard to convey emotions in a text post like this and even harder to allow vitriolic hatred towards your wife decontextualize the last six years of your life but you can believe whatever you want. I have a lawyer and I'm not going to be paying child support or alimony. Last though, for those who say I should stay in her son's life and be his father, that's not realistically possible. I don't hate him but I have been cheated on and lied to and used by a vile self-centered you know what who's now caught her children up in her lies and deceit. He's a causality of her actions and blameless. However, it can never change the fact of the harsh reality that we find ourselves in. I don't hate him. I feel so sad when I think about how he feels. But all I see when I look at him is six years of my life that I was lied to. Six years of my life I was used. And six long years of built up doubts and frustrations with a woman who used me. There's no putting aside my hatred to try and be in his life because the life I lived with him was nothing more than a facade all cultivated by his mother. This is the harsh reality that I find myself dealing with and I simply can't in good faith put myself or him through anymore. Since I'm seeing many armchair lawyers in the comments saying this post is fake on grounds of what I've said above, I will not reveal what state I live in but I'm currently going through a fun legal process called disestablishment of paternity. Won't shut up 90% of you who think Google makes you a lawyer but at least I tried. This is going to be my last edit before I move on from this small little distraction that I created for myself. First I want to thank everyone for their kind words to me. In the comments, the DMs and the chat, you've given me a bright day for the first time in a while. I wish I could reply to all of you but I can't. Thank you though. Secondly, I've noticed many people criticizing the word I used very profusely to describe my soon to be ex. I want to just say the place I am now is one of the darkest I've been in my life. I see nothing but white hot rage for the woman who ruined my life. Is what I said inappropriate? Is the word I used to describe her dehumanizing and vile? Yeah, I will admit that but I won't apologize for it. What I wrote here today was the truth of the world as it is for me right now. It's the raw unadulterated stream of consciousness of a flawed man. I do not intend to try and get people to hate women or to push some misogynistic message about how women are terrible. That's not my
my goal here, and that's not the message of this post. I understand why people don't like the word I use here. And you know what? I accept that as a valid criticism of what I did here today. I came here today to simply find some outlet for the situation that I find myself in, to rant and mourn and deal with the complex and raw emotions that have torn me apart for the last month. A place where I can freely speak my mind. And you know what? I did that. Today was pretty all right, thanks to you guys. Again, to everyone who showed me love and support, thank you from the bottom of my heart. To those who came here disagreeing with me, but showed me respect, thank you as well. After the shame and ridicule I face in my real life, the respect you showed me despite your disagreement was nice. So long and thank you for all the fish. Wow, that's so unbelievable. And yeah, these are completely valid feelings. This is a nightmare. Like what an awful heartbreaking, well, more than heartbreaking situation. Yeah, like this comment says, this hurt my heart to read this. My gut reaction as a mother was to tell you that it's not the child's fault, etc, etc. And it's not. What has me not telling you to not try and daddy those kids is your ex's reaction. She clearly had every intention of using those kids against you to try and guilt you and therefore control you. What an evil, awful woman. Your siblings are wrong. There's no happy ending here. It's not some made-for-TV movie. Get away from it and cut all contact and block her and get a new phone number if need be. Yeah, a million percent. It sounds like they're doing the best possible thing. And yeah, when you're dealing with somebody like that, it's not going to be a good, happy outcome. You need to get as far away from them as possible. Yeah, wow, that was wild. My husband splashed water on the dress I was going to wear to my brother's wedding because he thought it was too revealing. My husband and I were invited to my brother's wedding. I had a knee-length dress with straps on the shoulder and back to wear to the wedding. My husband didn't want me to wear it and said he thought it was too revealing. I told him to relax and take it easy since the wedding was small and no strangers would be there. Besides, I thought it was fine and not revealing. He kept arguing with me about it and told me to wear something else, but I refused. He waited until I was wearing it and then splashed water all over it. I was in shock. Water was too cold and it covered my whole body, not just the dress. It also got my face and my hair. I froze there in shock and I began to cry really loud. He was already in his suit ready to go to the wedding. He told me that he'd be waiting in the car for me while I changed, but I screamed at him to F off and get out. He didn't even apologize. He just kept ranting about how I ignored his feelings towards the dress and disrespected his opinion on it. I still feel upset and devastated by the whole thing. We're not speaking together and he thinks he did me a favor and kept my dignity and called me a hoe. I'm struggling to let this go and I get suffocated whenever I recall the event. Ew, that's revolting. Gonna end up single, dude. Yeah, that's so awful. And to call you a hoe afterwards? That's not how you treat someone that you love. And yeah, they're talking about their husband, which is even worse. And if they're not already behaving awfully, I feel like this is the beginning of really awful behavior. Like what's going through your head when you do something like this? Yeah, straight up. You deserve a partner who doesn't do stuff like this. The next one is called my boss got a $7,000 tip on a $45 bill and she just gave it to me. I must share this with the rest of you all. This happened yesterday. I work as a dishwasher and a cleaner at a very small restaurant. The owner is this amazing woman. I aspire to be like her in 10 years. Yesterday, a customer, a 50-ish year old man, left a huge tip, around seven grand. She thought that since she was the owner, she didn't get to keep the tip. So after she thanked the customer and he left, she made it clear that it was all going to me. I just couldn't believe my ears. I love my job and I love my boss. I now want to share my happiness with you guys. This Christmas, I'm going to be able to visit my home country and see my family for the first time in five years. Thank you. Wow, that's so beautiful. That's 100% how you treat employees. What a legend. The next one is called, my friend called me broke after I asked her to pay me back. So my friend was in dire need of cash and as the senseless moron that I am, I took out next month's rent and I handed it over to her. I'm still in college and there's barely any time to work. Plus money just doesn't last the way that it used to in high school. Today I asked her if she'd be able to pay me back soon and for some reason she found it offensive. She said she's going through a lot of crap and I'm not being supportive. I tried explaining the state of things to her and she began saying sexist stuff like what type of man asked a woman for money? Like what the hell? She even told me to get my broke ass a job. You can imagine the irony. <laughs> The ironing is delicious. The word is irony. Yeah, a million percent. The top comment. She is not a friend. She's rude. From this point on, I would consider this a loss and go no contact. She's a user. Nothing more and nothing less. Yeah, that's definitely not friend behavior. I installed a camera in the living room and I caught my husband making out with the babysitter. I've been having my suspicions for almost four months since I hired this 17-year-old babysitter for my three-year-old daughter. I'm a nurse working full-time while he works three nights a week and comes home to sleep during the day. I felt like I was going crazy.
crazy because something was off and he refused to ease my mind or answer the questions I had. So I put up a camera in the living room and I saw nothing until day four where he and the babysitter were making out on the couch behind my daughter's back while she was watching TV. I felt like my entire world came crashing to the ground. I felt all kinds of negative feelings including guilt. Even though I just wanted to keep my job when he complained about me pushing him to the side. He started crying when confronted. Yeah, because they were caught. Tried to get me to listen but I took my daughter and I went to stay with mum. It's been a whole month. The babysitter is gone and he's still crying about his slip up. Even went as far as to say that the babysitter was the one initiating. Oh my god. Trying to make excuses. I feel like I'm done with him after this. He managed to make me feel guilty for not dressing up or giving him enough attention. Now I do strongly believe I bear part of the blame. Oh god no. In what happened? I feel disgusted and my mind and heart keep racing not knowing how to deal with all of this. He's begging for a second chance and his family are defending him against me. I forgot to mention our ages. I'm 31 and he's 34. And the babysitter was 17. Am I reading this right? Yeah like this comment says he cheated with a minor. This is not your fault. Oh my god right when you think it can't get any worse it gets way worse. I drove one and a half hours to take a nap in my mum's bed. Within the last 30 days I was dumped by my girlfriend. My hamster passed away and I finally put my two weeks in at a toxic job. I an independent 28 year old was in need of something very specific that would fill the holes in my heart. I soon found myself driving one and a half hours to my mum's apartment where she greeted me warmly. I did my best to hang out with her for a bit but ultimately found my way to her bed and I cuddled up on it and I was passed out for five hours. When I finally crawled out of bed she had dinner ready and gave me the biggest hug. There's really nothing greater. Oh that's so beautiful. And while we're on a wholesome post I feel like we should leave the episode there guys. I've been secretly training my girlfriend. I've been secretly honing my girlfriend's ability to catch stuff. She was absolutely horrible at catching things and she's told me that she's mildly insecure about it. Oh, is this a wholesome one? She has many insecurities that I do my best to comfort and help her with. But this? This is something I can definitely help her with. So I committed. Over the past nine months, I've been throwing things more and more each passing day. At the start, she'd always drop it and would laugh it off and tease each other. Slowly, she was getting better. Now, her reflexes have massively improved and her catching skills are of a goddamn Olympic champion. I'm not even kidding, it's insane. I give her everything by throwing it to her now. Minus fragile objects, of course. I don't ever plan to tell her about this because she's been bragging about how much her ability to catch just randomly started improving. And I don't want to take her spotlight or make her feel like I'm taking the credit for her improvement. I also just really like hearing her shocked and giddy laugh and her ear to ear smile when she catches things. Especially in really awkward positions. Between two fingers, between her wrists, behind her back while looking at her phone at the same time. All things I can think of off the top of my head. Update. Yeah, they 100% told them, didn't they? I'm horrible at keeping secrets. And as soon as I posted this, I didn't last two hours before I called her over to read the post. She's actually quite happy and she laughed at the post and is appreciative of my long-term efforts. We're reading the comments and smiling. All of your comments are wonderful. Made both of our days. Thank you, Reddit. Wow, that's so awesome. And so wholesome as well. I was just saying how horrifying this subreddit is. But yeah, that one was adorable. My wife said that I'm not our daughter's father. During a fight, my wife told me that I'm not our daughter's father. My wife and I have a six-year-old daughter. We've been married for almost nine years. Okay, so this one's horrifying. We got into a really big argument, which isn't unusual for us these days. We've been on the verge of divorce multiple times, but always end up changing our minds. This time, she got so mad that she yelled at the top of her lungs. She's not even your daughter, and he was better in bed too. Oh, Jesus. She being our daughter, of course. My wife's facial expression told me that she immediately realized what she said. Then she claimed that she was just mad and said it just to be mean. It's not true, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, right. It made me start to think about when our daughter was conceived. We'd been having marital problems even back then. We'd actually kind of informally separated for a short time and I was pretty sure I was done with the whole thing. But we both changed our minds. I can't help but wonder if she was somebody else during that time. She could have just said what she said to be cruel, but that's a pretty serious thing to say. I hate myself that I'm looking at my daughter and wondering if features I thought that she got from me really aren't from me at all. She looks so much like my wife, it's hard to see much of anyone else in her at all anyway. I love my daughter, I love being a dad and her dad. I feel like I was meant to do it, we have such a great relationship. She loves her mum, but my daughter and I just have a special bond that my wife has said she's jealous of. That might be why she said what she did, I don't know. It wouldn't change how I felt about my daughter, but my wife would definitely no longer be my wife. It scares the crap out of me to think that somebody else could have some sort of parental right to my kid. Even though I'm still legally her father 
together regardless of DNA. It's not like a random guy's gonna want to come along after all these years and try to establish paternity anyway, but it's still unsettling. I'm probably overthinking it and my wife was most likely just trying to be extra cruel, which is her defense mechanism in arguments, but I just wish I could stop thinking about it. I don't feel like you're overthinking. Why would somebody ever say that? And like, obviously, I've got no place to speak on this, but even if what they said isn't true, you should absolutely not be with somebody who says something like that to you. That's revolting. I'm so sorry. That's so awful. They wrote a comment that said, I'm thinking about doing a DNA test, but part of me doesn't even want to give credence to her ridiculous mean statements that she makes when she's angry. Maybe I don't want to know the truth as well. I told her I was going to do one and she started saying, no, I was just joking. Please don't. And then she tries to make me feel guilty about it. Wow, that one was heartbreaking. But yeah, either way, you can't stay with somebody who says stuff like this. I can't understand any accent and it's getting out of hand. I, 28 female, am a white Midwesterner. I can't fully understand accents that aren't Midwestern based. I'm not sure what to do because I'm starting to feel like a bad person. I used to work as a hostess in a restaurant where we'd obviously get all different kinds of people visiting. I had a family come in from somewhere in India, I think. This man had a wife and two lovely kids. He was apparently asking me if he could switch seats to a booth instead of a table. I asked him to repeat himself at least five times because I couldn't understand his accent. The man looked so blatantly discouraged. He obviously worked hard to learn a second language and I couldn't even process the words he was saying. I felt like a ding dong. I thought maybe he just had a really thick accent and I'll get better at understanding people. No, I've gotten worse. I spoke with a woman recently who was from the South in the USA. She had a very country accent. I had no idea what the woman was saying to me and frankly just guessed. I was taking a full shot in the dark on responding to her because I was catching maybe every fourth word. My physical therapist is a woman from India as well and she has an accent. It's not very thick of an accent but it's still noticeable. I didn't realize how heavily I relied on reading lips until I couldn't. My physical therapist wears a mask to work so I never see the bottom half of her face. I have no problem with people wearing masks for any reason but it's making my already dismal interpretation skills that much more difficult. I should also add that medically my hearing is fine. I don't have any sort of hearing condition that I know of and I don't suffer from tinnitus. I never really listen to much loud music and if I ever go to a loud movie or concert or something, I bring those little loop brand earplugs with me so I can protect my hearing. I don't know what to do. It's kind of embarrassing at this point and I feel like a jerk. I don't want to make people feel bad for their accents. I don't know if it's a mental issue or if I'm just kind of dumb. Not sure if this matters but I think I suffer from face blindness too. Edit. I've come back to this post several hours later and I'm overwhelmed by all your positive comments. Some of the possibilities I'm seeing is that I could have some sort of sneaky hearing loss, even if I never abused my ears with loud sounds. I could be on the autism spectrum or may even have something called an auditory processing disorder. I'm going to call my general doctor and see if I can get a referral to get checked out. Thank you guys so much. I genuinely appreciate all the input. It was pretty comforting seeing that other people have the same issue that I do. And I'm going to try and implement some of the tips I've seen commented. The top comment's good. Maybe watch movies with accents and subtitles on so your brain starts recognizing the words with accents and making the connections. Yeah, what do you actually do in this situation? That's a hard one because you'd feel so bad. Like, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah, I feel for you on this one. I hope it gets better. I plan to have a quiet birthday weekend. My husband decided otherwise. It's my birthday weekend. I took four days off for a total of seven consecutive days off thanks to the holiday. I'm also six months pregnant, so I don't feel like doing much. My plans have always been clear. I want to relax. I want to lay by the pool before it closes, do a jigsaw puzzle, veg out and work on the nursery I've been putting off. Three hours ago, I was even asked what I wanted to do and I said nothing. I don't want to do anything, but that's not happening. My husband planned his best ever surprise for me. He's flying in my friend to spend four days with me as a birthday gift that I don't remotely want and I just found out about two days ago long after it was planned without even telling me. Slow morning followed by a massage. No. We're driving to the airport now to pick up my friend, get massages together, me and her, and then go to happy hour. Time at the pool followed by finishing up a puzzle. Nope. Work on the nursery. Can't do that because we're converting the guest room to a nursery, but now we have a guest that my husband invited. Why even ask me what I want to do if it doesn't matter? He's excited for me. He kept telling me I'll have a great time, but I don't want this. I made what I wanted to do clear. How is this a gift for me if it's something I 110% don't want? I won't have this chance to have a week off for a long time, not including maternity leave, but that's not a break. Now I'm stuck placing everyone else for my birthday because I want to do nothing wasn't clear enough. Yeah, so 100% don't go along with this. Your friend is going to understand what you want to do and whether your friend doesn't come or maybe they do, but you just sort of relax the whole time. That's completely fine. 
fine. And also pregnant and they want you to go to happy hour with them. So not drinking or drinking mocktails or something. Either way, you need to do what you want to do in this situation. You don't have to go along with this. The next one's called go on and have your nap big man. I've got you. Every day I take the same bus to work. It's a 45 minute bus ride. I don't mind it, although I can't wait to have a car. A few stops after I get on, a guy gets on. Big dude could easily be a linebacker in the NFL. Built like a house. Does some sort of manual labor, I assume, from his uniform. Always looks tired as hell. Every day I see him run to the bus stop and he gets on and it's 7am so he's exhausted. I am too, but I usually have coffee to offset it. Every day he gets on and walks to the back where I am. We make eye contact for half a second to acknowledge each other's existence. Give a head nod as men do. And then he sits down somewhere near me and falls asleep. For 45 minutes he sleeps there on the bus before his shift. I'm usually on my phone, but I'm looking over periodically making sure he isn't leaning too far to one side so he doesn't fall over. When we get to our stop, we just happen to get off at the same stop. I give him a tap on the shoulder to wake him up because it's time to get off. And then we go our separate ways. Every day, Monday to Friday, for like three months I've done this. I've never spoken a word to this man. So go on and get your extra 45 minutes of sleep in before work. I got you. Wow, that's so cute. I love that so much. And for some reason, it's even more wholesome because you haven't spoken to them before. You may very well have a friend for life here. Okay, the next one's called I was called selfish for choosing not to have a child. I'm 36 female. For health and personal reasons, I chose not to have kids. I'm a nurse by profession. One day at work, got two, a man and a woman about the same age as mine. Colleagues talking about their kids. I was just listening quietly and suddenly they asked me when do I plan to have kids? Yeah, see, I already feel like that's rude. Just straight up assuming. I told them the truth that me and my partner are not planning to have kids. Surprisingly, they were shocked about my answer and they obviously asked me why. I told them it was mainly because of my health and financial and personal reasons. I didn't bother explaining it further because it seemed like they wouldn't accept my reasons as per their initial reaction. To my surprise, the lady told me how actively selfish I am. Oh my god. How dare you? Not to bring a child into this world? Mind your own business. Oh my god. That I'm only thinking about myself and the man agreed and started lecturing me. I let them have their lecturing moment on me. When they were done, I just said I'm sticking to my own decision. It's just sad and frustrating how some people just can't be respectful of others' choices, especially when it doesn't have anything to do with them, and be judgmental and throw labels. Honestly, they gave me another reason on my list why I don't want to have a kid. Yeah, and they weren't just like a little bit rude and judgmental. They were super bloody rude. Honestly, though, how bloody rude of those people. Because think about it, though. This person doesn't want to have kids. If they had kids, even though they don't want to have kids, where they bring a child into this world that they're not ready for and they don't want, and they're potentially going to be a really bad parent or a completely disinterested parent. How is that not selfish? What they said doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, that's so annoying. Like, if you want to have them, that's awesome, but not everybody else wants to. And you've got no right to make them feel bad for no reason. Unbelievable. The next one's called, my neighbor pretended to be the police to bang on my door, and now I'm looking for a nice cake to bake him. So today I got locked out of my apartment while going to the bathroom. Paris, but I was lucky. My boyfriend was inside. I knock and I knock and I call and I knock, but my stone wall of a boyfriend stays deaf. My studio neighbor comes out, offers me his phone to help, but I just excuse myself and go back to knocking. I call and I call, I text and I call and still nothing. I even make a Zoom meeting, add his email to it and invite him aggressively to join, but he remains untouched by my advances. My fingers are bloody bones at this point from knocking on a hard wooden door and that's when my neighbor the hero comes back out. He knocks on him like the man has the FBI himself at the door, throws in a police just to be sure and then goes back home while I profusely thank him. Worm man finally opens, bleary eyed. He sleeps not 10 centimeters away from the door and looks annoyed at his cold girlfriend who waited an hour for him to open the door. After a bit of arguing, he decides that he'd rather go outside than have me twist his, you know what, into a balloon animal and leaves. And now I'm home icing what's left of my knocking knuckles while I wonder what cake to bake the neighbor dude and in what to give it. Chocolate has to be it, right? Right, okay, but were they ignoring you then? Cause surely they could hear you knocking on the door. Like obviously there's no context here, but why are they so upset about this? And OP has a comment here that says, honestly, I don't understand myself how this man falls into a coma. The fire alarm didn't wake him up. He's refusing to talk. Yeah, but why? I thought this was gonna be a cute and wholesome one, but it doesn't seem like it. I left my wife because I'm sick of everything needing to match her aesthetic. I know it seems like a dumb thing to end my marriage over, but after dealing with this for so long, I'm finally done. My wife and I are both in our 30s. We have a daughter. My wife 
wife has always been pretty into appearances, but it was never that bad. She just wanted things to look nice when people came over. Then she started an Instagram page for mums and got a massive amount of followers. About 400,000 since her daughter was born. Ever since then, I feel like I don't live in a house. I live in an Instagram photo shoot. Okay, so it's not only because everything needs to match their aesthetic. There's obviously deeper issues here, like putting Instagram before your family. There can't be any proof that we actually live here. My wife stresses so much about things looking good that she doesn't even actually enjoy the moment. She started a fight with me right after her daughter took her first steps because I had put my drink down on the table and it's all she could see and how she'd need to edit it out of the video. She called me a selfish prick for putting my own drink down on a coffee table to watch my daughter take her first steps. Oh my god. Our daughter's bedroom is just a massive beige and cream. There's barely any toys in it which was fine while her daughter was small but now she's getting older. My wife refuses to buy her any toys that don't match her aesthetic. My mum took my daughter to the store and let her pick out a toy. She picked out a doll house for a show that she watches. She got all the dolls and furniture and my wife told her that she had to keep it at my mother's because there was no place for it at home. She absolutely had room for it. Oh, this is so sad. My wife is convinced I'm leaving for another woman and I'm having an affair, etc. But I'm not. I just can't keep feeling like I live in a museum where I can't touch or move anything. I can't even build a blanket fort with my kid without my wife flipping out that they're decorative blankets that she'd folded in a special way. I'm not going to force my daughter to live in an aesthetic. Editing in, I've tried to encourage her to seek professional help. She insists that this isn't a problem and that she doesn't need therapy. But have you tried to sit down and talk to them about this and tell them how you feel about this? Do they realize how much this affects you? But yeah, that's so sad. And this is not a silly thing to be upset about. They've completely lost touch of what actually matters and they're putting this before their own family. Yeah, like this comment says, I'd say that you're not leaving her because of her addiction to her aesthetic. You're leaving her because she's selfish and obsessed with all that social media BS to the point where she puts that crap over her family. Good choice, bro. And honestly, I feel like somebody like this does need to read this. Like, please realize how sad and ridiculous this is. The next one's called, I'm sick of nobody knowing about this. Right, the other day I walked into a pub for the first time in ages. The gust of wind caused by my opening the door caused two receipts to fly off the bar straight at me. They flew by the side of me and did an act of astounding coordination, dexterity and raw speed. I caught one in each hand simultaneously and slapped them down on the bar in triumph. Astounding reflexes, cat-like agility, never to be repeated and nobody saw it or gave a damn. People need to know. Edit, Marvel has just contacted me about a possible film franchise. <laughs> I'm so happy that people know about this now. You're right, the world needed to know about this. The next one is called I'm a chef and I've been living a lie about the quality and authenticity of my food. I'm a personal chef for an upper class family in the US with a multi-million dollar house who go on many vacations every year. They claim that they miss authentic European and Asian food after living abroad for several years. When I first started cooking for them, I made elaborate dishes that took hours to make. Finding the exact ingredients, examining each piece of carrot, potato or chicken by hand, finding the right brands and going to multiple grocery stores to find the exact Pinot Noir to make the perfect red wine sauce. They don't like it. I once messed up a dish and I had to remake it really quick, so I took a few shortcuts to make sure it was still tasty. A normally 12 hour dish, I made a quick version of it in less than 30 minutes using vinegar instead of red wine. They said it was the tastiest thing they ever ate. It reminded them of the times they were traveling through some European mountains. Since then I've realized I don't need to spend hours making all the food perfectly authentic. I stopped using expensive brands of wine. Sometimes I don't even use wine at all. Grape juice or vinegar or even sugar seems to taste just as good, if not better to them. I've saved tens of thousands of dollars and probably thousands of hours getting cheaper ingredients that have already been brined or marinated and they absolutely love it. They even had me prepare larger meals for parties or events and they claim it was authentic French or Italian food. They'd ask me what combination of flour I used to make the pasta that was so clearly handmade. It was 99 cent box pasta from Walmart or it was clear I used a very particular Pinot Noir for a coca van, for which I actually just added a little fruit juice with some vodka, or that the saffron really made a difference in my risotto when I really just used turmeric, or how the food tastes so much better when the sauces are freshly made with raw ingredients when it's really mayonnaise plus ketchup, or some other dumb combination of common condiments. I smile and I nod, a part of me feels guilty, but not guilty enough to go back to making the more authentic versions that they just complain about that cost me way more and way more time and money anyway. I'm more just worried that one day they'll find out. But I've gotten away with it for almost eight years now. Edit, because so many people have asked. This was my first job as a personal chef and it was a side gig. When I took the job, I didn't know how much to charge. They asked what would be
be the price per meal for their family of four, including getting groceries, planning, prepping, cooking, plating, cleaning, etc. So everything, including groceries, will be included in what they pay me. So the groceries are a business expense. They don't reimburse me for it as part of my total fee. To be honest, that fee was vastly undercharging for my time and the amount of work I put in initially, as well as the quality of ingredients. Rookie mistake as a rookie cook, I guess. Also, I don't regularly serve box pasta, lol. It's just one of those examples off the top of my head. Wow, that's so interesting. So what you're saying pretty much is people have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to food. That's so interesting and so funny. Andy, I feel like that's enough for today, guys. I don't know about you guys, but I'm so ready to read something wholesome, especially on a subreddit like this one. But yeah, guys, I hope you had a wonderful time today. Let me know down below what you thought. My little brother made the sweetest poem in school today. There was a cat. Long ago, there was a cat who swallowed a ball of yarn. And when the cat had kittens, they all had sweaters on. Oh, cute. That's so good. The cat at the bottom with its paws up in the air is so cute. Oh my god, that's so similar. Little dog face on an egg. I didn't expect that to be absolutely uncanny. That's kind of amazing. Grandma, you need to eat four more bites since you're four years old. Me, but I'm five. Grandma, oh well, I don't think you can eat that much. Me eats five bites to prove her wrong. Grandma, in case you haven't noticed, you've fallen right into my trap. Grandparents are the best and they always will be. The pet store lied and now I have a piranha. Oh, the most adorable piranha ever. That's so cute and a beautiful place to end today's episode. And yeah, guys, thank you for watching once again. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more episodes like this, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Zeno SSJ4 Hero. Okay, not first yet again, lol. I love watching some Vinci before going to the airport today. I won't be back until Sunday, so have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you for the support, and I hope you have a good weekend as well. I'm sure you'll see this after your weekend, so I hope it was amazing. And yeah, thank you for the support. It means so much to me. I can't even stress to you guys how much I love making these videos. They're so fun, and if there's any subreddits you guys want me to cover, let me know down below. And yeah, I'll be back tomorrow for a brand new adventure. And as always, make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!